Hello everyone, welcome to Professional Cipher. This is the second video on Convolutional Neural Network. A quick recap on our last video which was Introduction to CNN. So we discussed the structure of CNN and what happens inside a CNN for an image and how it transforms. Then we learned about one layer of a CNN and what is the mathematical operation that's actually happening inside. Today we are going to delve deep into CNN, going to the terms in CNN because only after knowing the terms in CNN, we will be able to understand the size, the mathematical figures or the operations happening inside. So let's get familiar with the terms in CNN. Let's first start with filter. I hope you are already familiar with filters. In the last episode, we had shown filter. Filter is basically weights in CNN. You would be familiar with weights in neural network. That is the number with which the inputs are multiplied with. So here it's a matrix as you can see in this example the filter is a 3 by 3 filter and the values are 1, 0, minus 1 and it goes in for the last 3 rows. So that's a filter. A filter is weight in the case of a CNN as you can see here. And we had discussed the mathematical operation in the last video so you can check it out if you don't know. So moving to the next part, after discussing about filters, let's go to strides. So from the transition you would have understood what is strides. For example, in this case the first 3 by 3 yellow colored section in the input tensor, you can see that it's being multiplied with the filter and the math after the mathematical operation the value minus 5 is stored and then we shift by one unit, right? That is strides. The strides in this case is 1. And going to the next case you can see again we move by one stride, right? So the strides is 2 in this case. So I'm sure you would have understood about the filters and strides. Now let's see how we are getting the 4 by 4 size, right? We have an equation for the output size here, which is O equal to N minus F by S plus 1. I'll explain what are these entities. N means the input tensor size, F means the filter size, S means strides, right? Now let's go to the our case and understand what it is. Here you can see that the input tensor size is 6 by 6. The filter or kernel size is 3 by 3. The output size is 4 by 4. We have to make sure that the equation gives us 4 at the end. Okay, so n is 6, f is 3. And the strides from the transition you can see here, stride equal to 1. As I explained earlier, strides means number of units we have to shift on each operation, right? So n equal to 6, f equal to 3 and s equal to 1. So now let's apply and see the output size. 6 minus 3, 3, 3 by 1, 3, finally add the 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. So yes, the equation is correct. We are getting an output of 4 by 4, right? So the equation is correct. Now let's go to the major topic, padding. Let's learn this the usual way, why we need padding before jumping into what is padding. Can you see an observation here? Yes, the output size is less than the input size, right? Because of the equation, we can see that it is n minus f. So, obviously, the size keep on decreasing. And if we continue the operation, the amount of or the size of the tensor keep on decreasing. Which means we are losing a lot of data. So, in problems in machine learning regarding images where we don't want to lose the information or data in the tensor, we should not try this, right? But we have to use CNN. So, what's the way around? Yes, that's padding. So what padding does is, as you can see here, if I don't do anything and I keep on doing it, the size will reduce. So one way to get around it is padding. So what we do is, first let's see the size which would have come. So focus on the white portion, which is a 4 by 4 tensor in the input side, the left side. The input size is 4, filter size is 3, right? Now let's assume the stride to be 1. So 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So our resultant tensor had to be 2 by 2. From a 4 by 4 tensor, we going to a 2 by 2 tensor. The data is decreasing a lot. But to prevent that, what we do is we are choosing padding of 1. So here the padding is 1. What does it mean? So you can see one unit of 0 is added all around the tensor, right? Now by padding it with zeros, which is a conventional way, you can pad it with other numbers also. But usually zero is used for padding. So by building something like a wall, right, which is padding here, 
Now let's compute the final output. So from 4 by 4, this has become a 6 by 6 tensor, which is our first case. So now the input tensor is 6 by 6. Then the filter is what? 3 by 3. Now our output will be 4 by 4. So in the first place, the white portion on the left side was for 4 by 4. The output tensor is also 4 by 4. So by padding, we don't lose any data or any information in the image, right? So I hope this example has helped you understand padding in a better sense. So padding basically helps us to regain the size of the tensor which is inputted. Padding can be used to increase the size or anything but basically padding is used for this. Now going to the major equation which, is, which comes with the padding. So the first equation we saw was O equal to N minus F by S plus 1. But by introducing padding the equation updates into O equal to N plus 2P minus F by S plus 1. Now let's apply and see, right? In this case, the original size of the input tensor, which was on the left side, the white portion is 4 by 4. But the padding is 1. So 4 plus 2 minus 3. 4 plus 2, 6. 6 minus 3, 3. 3 by striding was 1. 3 by 1, 1. Plus 1 equal to 4. Yes, our output is 4. So after learning filters, strides and padding. Let's go to something deeper which will help us in the future. Channels. So we saw what happens in a single layer. But usual cases are not like that. They will have multiple channels. So what we saw was a single channel problem. So coming to here, here we have three channels. You might have got what I am intending here. Yes, the input is an RGB image. Red, green, blue. So the operation here will be discussed later, but channels means number of layers. So not just the input tensor, the filters will also have number of channels so that the output tensor will can also have number of channels. So let's go to this image. This will help you understand the channels. You can see that in the below image that is a CNN till the fifth image, something keeps on growing, right? Something along the width. What is the width here? Actually, the width is channels. Number of channels keep on increasing in a CNN. Channels means more information. Like a single channel is a single image. It doesn't have any much of an information in the depth. But the number of channels keep on increasing. Like one channel will be edge detection. Other channel will be something other property. So as number of channels increase, we get more information from you can see in this image. So basically channels means number of layers. So filters can also have channels which we will discuss in depth later. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Professional Cipher.